Good evening, good evening. My name is Steve Marvel. Today I would like to talk to you about some climate facts which you may or may not know. Specifically, can you dehydrate in the jungle, even though you're drinking water? Can you get heat stroke in the Arctic, even though it's really cold? And can you freeze in the desert? Let's start with that one. Um, deserts outwardly are depicted as hot, barren, dry places. Uh, and yeah, generally speaking, they are. The majority of deserts, which are North and Africa, equatorial sort of deserts, they are really 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 hot all day and all night all year however there are some other deserts like the gobi or the deserts in patagonia uh, which are variable and they are cold and they will get below freezing cold in uh in their winter months which is worth looking out for uh, because if you are not prepared for that you might be all lovely in the daytime and then come night time you'll be needing proper winter clothes and uh yeah you could you could freeze you get half turn the hypothermia you get frostbite all of that badness so yeah Watch out of that. Think about that. Think about clothes. Think about shelter and heat um, when you are planning your desert trips. Let's have another one, shall we? Let's have heat stroke in the Arctic. Okay, Arctic, necessarily cold. Really, really, really cold. Um, not only can you get heat straight, but you can dehydrate. The reason you can dehydrate is because air at minus 20 degrees C does not support water. And so consequently, the air around is completely desiccated and is, um, yeah, it's had humidity of zero and you need to hydrate that water in order that you can then breathe properly at which point you exhale 100 percent humid water therefore you are dehydrating however what's this lark about getting too hot well it is necessarily the case and is always the case uh, that if you're in the arctic you are wearing some thick ass clothes yeah they are generally not the most breathable clothes in the world uh, because you're normally spending a lot of time sat around, sat on vehicles and bimbling rather than, or even snowboarding and skiing. There's not a lot of, not a lot of, no, don't hate on the man that doesn't ski or snowboard much. Um, it's not a lot of exercise. If you want to dig a snow hole, however, if you want to collect firewood, however, not that there's a lot of it kicking around, but you know, the boreal forest slout, slightly not Arctic. You know what I mean. You know what I mean. Uh, when you are trying to do some work, you're trying to erect tents, you are doing those heavy uh bodily uh motions and you are generating heat through muscular use of the muscles generating heat generating heat generating heat and it cannot get out of your clothes fast enough you can't conduct that heat out fast enough this clothing is made for retaining the heat inside so if you are working in the arctic 
and you are generating heat internally, you you can't get it out of your clothes fast enough. So consequently, your core temperature will increase and you will ultimately get heat stroke if you don't watch it. So, yeah, you can freeze in the desert and you can get heat stroke in the Arctic. So to the jungle. Can you dehydrate in the jungle even though you're drinking water? Yes, we know that you require copious amounts of water in the jungle because you are sweating and you are sweating inefficiently. You are sweating inefficiently because the air is so wet. Um, your, sweat, your sweat isn't actually evaporating well. And it's the process of evaporation that is the cooling effect. Um, if you're just leaking water as sweat, then it's not actually doing anything until it evaporates. But if it can't evaporate, you're in trouble, um, which is why we drink loads and loads of water. However, in order that you um, stay hydrated, there are two components. Hydration isn't all about fluids. Hydration is all about fluids and salts, uh, electrolytes, I should say. You need both fluids and electrolytes. If you're just banging in loads and loads of water, you are dehydrating because you've not got this component. component. Uh, specifically, you're not getting any sodium in, uh, salt. Uh, what, yeah, because I think you can taste the salt in your sweat. Uh, get some sodium in because that's really important. Getting in um, proper electrolytes, which you can get through. I, I have Himalayan pink salt in the house because it's full of electrolytes. I don't drink. <laughs> I don't spend enormous piles of cash on hydration. Um, sachets uh if i get but hot in the uk i have a bit of sugar and a bit of salt uh for which there are specific um volumes that is to say or yeah i've got a special spoon i'll do this another day there's a little spoon which puts salt on one side and you stick the sugar on the other and the sugar helps uh you absorb the electrolytes properly um Anyway, you are going to need electrolytes in order in order in order to stay hydrated. So, in summary, yes, you can dehydrate and get heat stroke in the Arctic. You can freeze in the desert. And you can dehydrate in the jungle, even though you're drinking loads and loads of water. If you have any other climate facts, bang them in the comments, because I'm really, really interested in them. Um, oh, yeah, there is the, of course, the temperate climate, uh, which the UK is in, and much, much uh, all the other uh, above the uh, tropics and below the Arctic, uh, and that's basically rainy. There you go. So you get wet a lot because it chucks it round, down, and that's not a massive disaster. But I'm joking aside. There are those major climate regions, and we have to be careful of how we treat them by knowing how to act within them and the equipment that we require. Until next time, I shall see you soon.